Good morning. Welcome to Stone United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Kendra Ballier, and I am so glad to see you on this bright, sunny, cheerful June morning. And happy Father's Day to the fathers that are here in the sanctuary or tuning in. I'm glad to have you with us as well. Some of the announcements that we have today, uh, if you have not seen it or have not signed up your 5 to 12 year olds, we have Out of the Woods, which is our summer camp. It is our form of a Bible school this year. We have teamed up with the the Camp um, Wesley Woods to do Out of the Woods, which we will, we will be hosting here at Stone United Methodist Church. The first day will be Sunday, the uh, June the 30th from 1 to 6 p.m. here at the church. And there will be camp games and there will be a cookout that night too. That will be for the cookout itself will be for any age, that includes the adults, and we'll do that out here on the lawn. We'll have a good old-fashioned campfire. We'll have some campfire songs. That'll be a lot of fun. And then on Monday and Tuesday from 9 to 3, we will be doing regular camp things here at the church. And we'll go over to um, Diamond Park, too, weather permitting. Even one day, we will have a wet day where they will be doing some games with water. So all kinds of fun there. And we'll be having some food here at the church. So get your child signed up. It is at wesleywoods.com backslash out of the woods, or you can use the little QR code. You can find that on our website as well. By the way, on Wednesday, we have a bus, and we will be taking the kids to Wesley Woods for a day at the camp. That will be exciting, very exciting. By the way, we do need some of some volunteers for for those days and there are sign-up sheets here in the sanctuary there's one out in front of the um, cyf office as well for volunteers and we will be having a safe sanctuaries training on monday june the 24th that is a monday evening at 6.30 p.m., that will be the only training evening because we have to bring somebody in now to do those trainings. And the Reverend um, Megan Mallory will be coming in to do that training, and, and that will be in Miller Parlor. So, and if you are going to be a volunteer and you do not have your, your Act 33 and 34 clearances on file. You need to get those on file as well. If you need help getting those, uh, they're free to do. I will help you get those, or Jen will help you in the office as well. Okay, and I have handouts of that if you need to have any of the uh, Out of the Woods flyers to help you remember to sign up. Okay. So, are there any other announcements that I need to help anybody remember? No? All right. With that, let's go on and do our call to worship. If you are able, I invite you to stand. If you are not, I invite you to stand in spirit and join with me for the call to worship. We believe, in, we believe God will save us in times of trouble. We know that God has saved us in the past, tending and helping us along the way. We call on God God's power when we feel powerless to respond, believing and knowing that God will save. God, open our hearts today to encounter our love that acts with us and through us 
to bring flourishing to all, uh, all of your creation. Our opening hymn this morning is we gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. Hymn number 131. 131. If you then join with me for the opening prayer, we confess that we don't always like the way your power works. We blame you for all that goes wrong in the world, and yet we forget that you empower us to resist evil. We want you to help us in exactly the way we ask. And yet, we forget that we are not the authors of our own salvation. We say we desire for your work, kingdom to come. And yet, we forget to listen to your voice calling us to work for the flourishing of our neighbors. Forgive us, Holy Trinity and free us to cooperate with you in the work of salvation for ourselves, our community, and our, of our creation. Amen. And our confession of faith this morning is number 881, the Apostles' Creed, which will be on the screen. Join with me in this ancient affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
You may be seated. And this morning, with uh, no children being here, I am going to go ahead and begin with the, um, go ahead and go to doing the offering. So it is time now for our tithes and our offering. And in, in our church, we give to give gratitude to God for what God is doing in our lives. So let's go ahead and give. invite you to pray with me. Lord God, in this day and in this place, we know that we are so blessed by you. Lord, we give thanks for all that you give. Lord, we give back to you. We give back and know that you are with us. Even in times of trouble, we know that you are with us. And we say thank you. Watch over us, we pray. We give thanks in days of sunshine. We give thanks in days of rain. We give thanks to you knowing that there will be a tomorrow because of you. Lord, bless the givers and bless those who were not able to give as well. Knowing that you are God of all. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Today, I want to share with you one of the Psalms. And I especially love to pray the Psalms. The Psalms give me joy just because of that. You can find in the Psalms anything that you are feeling. If you are feeling joy, you can find it in a Psalm. If, you are fi- if you're feeling fear, you can find it in a Psalm. If you're fi- feeling sadness, you can find it in a Psalm. If you're feeling lament, you can find it in a psalm. And it's okay to feel all of those things. 
because we know that God himself, Jesus himself, felt all those things. And even Jesus expressed those things in prayer to God. So when I take time to pray those prayers, it gives me an opportunity sometimes to, even if I can't find the words, the Psalms help me find the words to express what I'm feeling in that moment. So today, Psalm 20, it says, the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of, God, of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard, regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some boast of chariots and some of horses, but we boast of the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the king, O Lord. Answer us when we call. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, today, in this place, we know that you are all powerful to save. We know that in your Holy Spirit, you are already at work. We know that in spite of my voice, you are already here. And we are hearing you in spite of me. Work in our hearts, Lord. We invite you in. Lord, we pray this today. In Jesus' holy name. Amen. You know, I, I've had some really awesome opportunities this past week. And... In fact, I even made extras of these this week because I get to be back in the classroom this week. I get to be the substitute teacher this week. And it's been a few years since I've been in the classroom. And I'm loving it. And I didn't think I would ever get the opportunity to be in a classroom again. It's not a big classroom, of course, and it is summer camp with the, the kids upstairs. But it's an important thing, and especially for parents who are working that we have a place that's safe, that we can have children come and learn and because it's here not only do they get to be safe and learn but they get to learn about Jesus and that's even better yet right so I get to tell them about Jesus 
And so I get to do a couple of good things this week. I get to be the pastor. And I get to be a teacher. And I'm excited. Now, it's supposed to be pretty hot this week. This is the last of the cool days. It's supposed to be so hot that it'll be, well, heat indexes are supposed to be in the hundreds. And I told the kids that we were going to do a scavenger hunt tomorrow, that we were going to do some exploring here in the building. And they're excited. And I got to witness some tours yesterday that were happening here in the building. And people were excited to come in the church to see our magnificent building. And I could see people taking pictures of our beautiful ceiling and our beautiful windows and our beautiful walls. And we had a memorial service here yesterday. And as people were coming through the front doors on Chestnut Street, I could hear people remembering as they had come through these doors, maybe when they were children. And the one woman even said to me, you know, I was here as a child a long time ago. And my dad was one of the people who laid the stones to the floor in this building. And I said, you know, this building is going to be having, this church is going to be having an anniversary next year, a bicentennial. There's all kinds of opportunities if we just seize them, right? How often do we seize the opportunities that we are given? I want to read to you an, another scripture passage today. This one is the gospel passage for today. It comes from Mark, and it's actually the gospel that... Jesus speaks, Mark 4, 26 through 34. And Jesus says, he also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself the first stock, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with the sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what we can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. And when many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Well, yesterday, we got to sow some nuggets as people came in. And next year, now that I know that this is a stop on the tour for the Historical Society, I will be putting that on my calendar so I make sure that I'm here. And I will be planning ahead. So I can be sowing some nuggets as well. 
And there were some nuggets that were sown yesterday. But how often do we get opportunities to sow those little seeds and nuggets while we are out and about? Hmm. My husband today is wearing his WPA UMC shirt that I had made up and have it. I thought ahead I probably would have worn mine today too, but I did not do that. And the whole reasoning for making those shirts up, I had gotten a grant to be able to get those shirts made up. I had one for every person that was at annual conference last week. Just a visual. But when people are out and about, they can look at that little visual that has the logo of annual conf or of the annual conference. And that visual for folks is to let them know that the annual conference is still alive and well. And while folks are out and about, it's nonverbal. But it lets them know that the annual conference is still alive and well and still out and about. And while folks were in Erie last week at a baseball game, everybody knew who the 170 people were at the baseball game, enjoying the baseball game, that they were a bunch of Methodists enjoying a baseball game. In fact, they knew it was a cohesive group at a baseball game. Well, think about that. Methodists were a cohesive group. Huh. And on Friday of a week and a half ago, they were out doing Mission Impact in Erie cleaning up the neighborhoods where we were all staying and using the convention center and working with the city. <gasps> there were 70 volunteers out there wearing those shirts. Mm-hmm. Yep. And they knew who they were. And they weren't preaching a sermon. They were using their hands, and they were using their feet, and they were being the feet of Christ and the hands of Christ. Now, there are many ways to sow those seeds, folks, but to deploy is a big way of being the hands and feet of Christ. To actually be the hands and feet of Christ. To show them the love of Christ is the biggest way. Now we have different ways of being missional here. Whether it be down in the soup kitchen or being all kinds of different ways. And we all have ways of using our imaginations. And yes, it's good. And the primary thing that we are about is worshiping the Lord our God. But we also need to be the hands and feet of Christ. So when we know that we have joy in our lives, we can share that with one another. So when we have our little meetings right here at one of the posts in the morning, we can share those joys. And when somebody calls and needs help, we know that we can do that too. When somebody needs some food, we know that we can supply that. When somebody needs prayer, we know that we can supply that. It's important 
as the body. We don't know where those seeds will land. We don't know where they will blow in the wind. But we do know that the Holy Spirit covers this earth. And we know that it is not our job to make the Christians, but it is our job to invite those in so that the flames may be fanned and that they may grow. Are you inviting today? Are you moving over so that the seat next to you can be sat in? Have you picked up the phone and said, hey, what you doing today? And especially this week, because it's going to be hot. Are you checking on people this week and making sure that they are okay? And I invite you to do that, especially this week. Because people are going to be needing checked on to make sure that they're well. Please do that. And make sure you're well too. Let's pray. Lord, we all have opportunities. And when we have these opportunities, Lord, we need to make decisions. And sometimes it's hard because we realize that there are so many choices that we make every day. And sometimes we say we've already done that or we've already tried that. I can imagine what you say. Lord, give us the courage. Give us the strength. Give us the endurance and give us the hope that we're called to have. Because you called us to a time such as this, for the here and the now. And I can think of 40 families that are counting on us every day of the week. On the second and the third floor. And I can count the multitude of clients and support groups of people that walk in and come in through the basement every week in this place that count on us to be here. And I know, Lord, that there are people that are counting on us in more ways than we can even realize. And especially coming up, whether it be hot or cold. So give us the power, Lord, through your Holy Spirit to do what we can or even the things that we can't even imagine we can do, but you have given us the power to do. Give us your vision. Give us your love. Give us your hope and your assurance. We ask this through Jesus Christ. 
who lived our life, who became man, became human, so we would know that you completely understood what it was like to be us. And we pray this in his name. Amen. So we have some joys this morning. One of the joys is that there are families that are gathering that haven't seen each other for quite a while. So that's a joy. And we have made it through our first week of summer camp here at Stone. So that is a joy. And we're still all at, some of you know, some of you don't know. Um, my husband John and I are about to become grandparents again. And we, um, the baby was due on Friday, and we're still waiting. So um, everything's, everybody's healthy, though, so we're just still waiting. Thank you very much. This will be this. This is uh, this daughter's first child, so we're we're just waiting on little Parker to arrive. And any other joys today? Okay. So some of the prayers today are people struggling with mental health issues. And there is a brother-in-law that is about to have surgery this week for lung cancer. Any others? Okay. So our prayer hymn this week uh, or today is God of the Ages, number 600. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ooh, good. A negative report for lung cancer. Praise God. Any others? All right. Now let's go ahead and sing our prayer hymn, which is God of the Ages, number 698. It is up on the screen, 698. <laughs>
Lord God, in this day, we gratefully thank you for the sunshine and the cool breezes, a time of gathering together, the initiative of a, a 12-year-old that decided to do something for the church and put back together a piece for the bowling alley downstairs. We thank you for the sounds of a, a two-year-old playing in the back. We thank you, Lord, for the faithful who come every Sunday. We thank you for the faithful who come to small country churches or small churches here in town who have no musicians. And we thank you for our musicians who give of themselves, knowing that we are blessed with the sounds of the organ playing. We thank you today, Lord, that we have a place that we can come to to worship you. And we are grateful, Lord, that we have a place that is utilized all year long with the child care center, with the soup kitchen, with meetings that happen from the planning committee of the mission for MLK, the Girl Scouts, those who were out digging this week and planting flowers and giving of them their time to weed gardens and fix wat dryers and plant geraniums. We thank you, Lord God, for moments of joy. We thank you, Lord God, for negative reports of lung cancer. But we also pray, Lord God, for a brother-in-law who is still struggling with lung cancer and preparing for surgery. We continue to thank you, Lord God, for tiny blessings like new babies. But we also realize, too, that there are people who are grieving in our midst with losses of loved ones. We know that there are people who are struggling with housing and food. And they're praying for relief. So, Lord, we pray, and we look for ways with them, and we travel this journey that we call life with you and with each other. For our hope is in Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and we are so grateful
for you are all powerful to save. You hold us in the power of your hand. You nurture us in the valleys and you travel with us to the mountaintops. Lord, we do know that there's still the journey that lies ahead, whether it be the journey of getting through just to the next day or the journey of politics and the next elections or the journey of this world and, and the, the horrible nature of human beings fighting. But there's hope. Hope in a game like the Summer Olympics. There's hope in the face of a newborn child. There's hope in vi vacation Bible school. There's hope when we open the doors to people taking tours just to be able to share the beauty of a church. And there's hope when somebody just comes in to rest and have a meal. Lord, continue to fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. Continue to advocate for us and help us to advocate for each other. Give us the will to do what you have us to do and the power to do it, the vision to see it. We pray this today knowing that Jesus was the, the master and still is, the one who put all the pieces together and continues to do that. He's the master builder, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we live in his kingdom. And he taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the, and the glory forever. Amen. This next song is in The Faith We Sing. It'll be up on your screen as well. It's Shout to the Lord. It is a happy and a joyful song. It is a praise song. Shout to the Lord. Let us give our praise to God.
I didn't realize that there weren't all the verses in the book when I picked the song. I'm sorry. Next time, I will make sure that we have all the verses on the screen. Hmm. Because the verses are wonderful. Well, you know. We learn, don't we, jo Jim? <laughs> but... You know, when we leave this place, we do have an opportunity to shout for joy. Every time we see something that amazes us, that we're grateful for, we have an opportunity to tell God thank you and shout for joy. There's all kinds of those opportunities. There's pretty flowers out in the, in the front of the church right now. You can tell God thank you for those. And if you see anybody who helped dig, a, dig in the dirt out there, you can say thank you to them too. There's all kinds of little things around here too. Just say thank you. That goes a long way. And if you have the opportunity to see a young man in the back back there, I know he didn't do it for an attaboy or a thank you. Let's tell him thank you anyway because he did an amazing job. And to the fathers out there, happy Father's Day. Thank you. And if you have an opportunity this week to check on somebody who might need checked on, thank you. There's lots of ways that we can be the hands and the feet of Christ. So go out and do that this week. In the name of God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Mm -hmm.